Hello, my name is Justina, more commonly known as Tisha, and I will walk you through a very handy tool that is stakeholder mapping and stakeholders in general. So grab a cup of coffee and let's go. So <clears throat> a stakeholder is an individual, social group or actor who possesses an interest, legal obligation, moral right or other concern in the decisions or outcomes of an organization or project. Stakeholders either affect or are affected by the achievement of the organization's objective or project objectives. And if you wonder why you or anyone else on the product team should give a flying flamingo about stakeholders, think about any historic breakdown that happened because one person crossed the tipping point of their emotional life. Even a relatively small app coded by a team of one has more stakeholders than the single developer and is contingent Conway's law that says that any organization that designs a system, defined broadly, will produce a design whose structure is a copy of the organization's communication structure. My colleague Michael attempted to break down this law. You can open his blog post in the new tab, save it for later and get back to stakeholders. Some might think that this recording is a subject between just Makimo and me, right? But if we look carefully, this landscape is much broader and diverse. So let's go wild, because wild is the only sensible option here, and list some stakeholders. We've got Makimo, competitors, content creation, project manager, marketing people, all of my colleagues, especially Michael, um, project teammates, uh, might be from other companies, uh, my Let the Tech Out podcast bestie, uh, one cute Dutch Caribbean guy, clients and their users, uh, HR slash accounting, um, the academy, my students, friends, family and the dog, business book authors, technology providers, policy makers, our bank, AI engineers, me, our editor, and you, the viewer. Some might wonder, geez, that many? And the answer is yes. And I was even a little bit too frugal with the details. When you're on the quest to identify your project stakeholders, consider who is interested in what you're doing and who can help you make it or break it, even if helping means aborting the mission for the greater good. Graphic markers, post-it notes or an online whiteboard and set up a quick workshop with the project team to ensure that no stakeholder sneaks under the radar. Pinpoint individuals who are rooting for your project's success or secretly hope you'll be struggling. Think about team members and users, customers, sponsor, or even your neighbor. Next, button down who's got the power to shake things up. This could be senior management, investors, regulatory bodies, or some crucial suppliers. Then break down your stakeholder list and really get to know these players. Who's cheering for your success and stands to gain from it? Who's your go-to collaborator and idea generator? How can your sales and marketing team make a splash? Who's throwing a wrench in the works and why? And who's cashing on the failure? Keep it casual, keep it clear for all the project team members. And don't forget to ask as many questions as possible. By the middle of the list, you probably notice that these stakeholders have different levels of involvement and influence on the project. Some are deeply embedded in the action, making decisions and driving progress. In contrast, others are more distant, watching from afar and occasionally chiming in with their two cents. Take the stakeholder map template 
Uh, if you don't have any, feel free to use the one in the description below and spread your project stakeholders across the concentric circles according to their distance from the project. If you're using a virtual whiteboard, think of listing all the actors first, then duplicate the list and rearrange all the items instead of copy-pasting them one by one to avoid doubles or missing pieces. Reflect on the placement and report of your stakeholders within the project and with each other. Use different symbols to denote these connections, such as broken arrows or zigzags for complex relationships. The further the stakeholder is from the project, the more challenging it might be to communicate, negotiate, and collaborate. Conversely, close collaborators might make you feel more at ease, but they can also make frank, explicit conversation daunting. However, being mindful of these subtleties and aligning expectations with the rest of the project teammates can be truly empowering. Commonly, there are two types of stakeholders, internal and external but they are not that binary. We can have as many shades and concentric circles that represent different categories and different areas of influence in relation to the project as we find useful. Better yet, you can skip the external, internal play and jump right into prioritizing stakeholders. The beauty of mapping is that you can put what you like on paper or an online whiteboard as long as it works for the project team and the company. The more gingerly you follow one standard, though, the easier it is for others to hop on the project, so don't reinvent the wheel. Another fantastic tool for mapping stakeholders is a 2x2 two two grid. It adapts to different scenarios, allowing you to visually map and thus easily compare and contrast any options and metrics you like. And the graphical nature invites communication and engagement among teams and stakeholders, making you an expert or look like one, with hardly any sweat broken. Thanks to the Onion stakeholder map, we know where to look for the parts and assume how hard it would be to reach and influence them, just in case any decision or effort is required. The complexities of project communication can be overwhelming, but they alone don't provide a comprehensive understanding of each stakeholder's significance or engagement in the project. This is where the power interest matrix steps in, offering a structured approach to assessing and prioritizing stakeholders. It provides a reassuring framework for making informed decisions about their engagement. According to this matrix, we can categorize our stakeholder groups by looking at two main factors. Power, which refers to their ability to influence the organization's strategy or project resources. And interest, which reflects how much they care about the organization or project successing. When we plot our stakeholders on the power interest matrix, we end up with four categories, each requiring its own management strategy. The big players in the top right quadrant are the ones to manage closely. They're super interested in your project and have a lot of influence over how it turns out. Think of people who make resourcing decisions or your CEO who wants to pitch in personal ideas for a design. You need to keep a close eye on them, because if you don't, they could accidentally or intentionally mess up your project. But if you manage them well, they can become your biggest supporters, making success more likely. Stakeholders in the top left quadrant aren't currently involved in your project, but they hold serious sway. It's key to keep them satisfied, because if they see your work affecting theirs, they might hop on board. Consider touching base with them to ensure their interests are taken into account, although fulfilling their requirements might be just enough to keep them happy. Now for stakeholders in the bottom right quadrant. Stakeholders who are interested in your project but don't have much power should be kept in the know. Invite them to research sessions, 
keep them in the loop with the brief emails or newsletters and include them in design critiques whenever possible. Stakeholders in the bottom left quadrant are not worth spending too much time on. They're not really interested in your work and don't have much power over it. But things can change and they might end up in a different quadrant, so keep an eye on them. You can stick to the maps only. They can handle different types and amounts of data, although not always in a way that is convenient to browse afterwards. Another option is to move your findings to a spreadsheet or a dedicated tool that supports connecting data across different documents, leaving the graphical representations for the workshop fun. Even though the power interest matrix provides you with a skeletal stakeholder management plan, each one might require an individual approach based on their role, company values, experience, culture, and demographics to find the best way to communicate and engage with them. Making an extra effort to figure out the wise and sweet spots of your stakeholders will help you connect with them better and take you a long, super way. But just as your project is constantly evolving, its stakeholder maps are living matter, so check frequently to ensure that they match the current project landscape. Your team composition might have changed, new laws and policies could have been issued, or your tech stack could have changed. Outdated documentation makes your life harder and can be misleading, resulting in wasting the time of totally wrong people. Having this knowledge, let's dig deeper into the stakeholders of this recording. Makimo benefit on many different levels, but as a brand, it shows the public that their consultants and employees care about the business, know various tools and maps, and are eager to share their knowledge with others. The owner of the content creation project is genuinely interested in my progress and constantly inquires about it. But when dissatisfied, she might also ask me to quit recording entirely. The company's marketing people might want to know when to publish this recording and how to promote it via LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook or other media. They're not likely to interfere with the substance, yet they can suggest topics and forms that get better traction on the internet. My colleagues from Makimo, even the ones who are mostly involved in producing lines of code, are genuinely interested in the business reasoning behind each project and each feature. Among my colleagues, there is Michael, whose post I mentioned before. I don't need his permission to do so, but keeping him informed would be wise for some more shares and likes in social media. My teammates rely on my input and my expertise either as an individual contributor or design lead. Regardless of how much I try, conceiving a recording requires some time, which on the other hand can be a valuable project allotment, generating a conflict of interests that needs to be managed. And speaking of design work, there are also clients and their businesses, deadlines, projects, goals to be met. From their point of view, I should be working on the experiences and interfaces, not on the recording. So I should keep an eye on our relationship as well. That brings me to HR and accounting and all the people in the company who measure person hours I'm spending doing internal things. Surely they are very important, but they are still internal things and finance might have different metrics for their satisfaction. We shouldn't overlook my students who have to learn about stakeholders during the research course. With this recording, they gain a single source of truth for their projects and exams. The only thing is to tell them about it. However, I don't believe the Dean would be happy to see me recording this video while giving academic classes. Then there's me, Tisha. This recording indubitably contributes to my personal brand and the armory of content to repurpose, so I have no problem working on it outside Makimo's office. 
but I also have other passions to satisfy, a beast to take care of, count also my friends and family who might fancy seeing me at a board game, on a run, at a wine bar, anywhere clear from the text editor. One cute Dutch Caribbean guy mocked me recently for poor priority management. Teasing aside, balancing all the facets of my life can be challenging even without creating content. And per mentioning, the cute Dutch Caribbean guy has just joined the stakeholder bunch. I wonder if he should be informed about this recognition though. For an incidental viewer, it might be just anyone. Tony the Beast deserves a special spot not only because I should manage his needs, but also because I have an idea how to incorporate him later in some more business design related content. There is one special side project in my life the Let the Tech Out podcast, which is both a great source of inspiration and yet another time-consuming and attention-seeking offspring. There are also authors of books on business development, design thinking, business strategy and project management. Even if I don't quote them directly, they gave me some sources of inspiration for the recording and the graphics, and they should be at least recognized in the description. Mentioning them in the promo stuff might earn us some comments or shares on the sh social media. Then we have technology providers. This recording wouldn't be able to be published or reach any audience without a proper service like YouTube. And as a service, uh, YouTube has some requirements regarding file format, contents, etc which we have to fulfill. And while we almost don't notice the system on a daily basis, we might have trouble uploading a special type of file or encounter a server error, which in the end might delay the publication. Not that this particular video needs precise timing, but it illustrates the general principle. This stakeholder spectrum is quite abstract as well but it nicely illustrates a very special case that is often omitted. Policymakers. It might happen that one day writing about stakeholders will require some sort of a certificate or license. Such a thing will probably never happen, but the more complex a project involving sensitive data, medical documentation or financial operations, the more regulation it needs to monitor and satisfy. Our bank couldn't issue a debit card for me that wouldn't be blocked a few days after the first payment, so I was constantly losing access to the apps and services I used to draw all the maps. I would love to satisfy their needs of this particular entity that has a problem with me, but currently no one knows how to fix that issue. Speaking of privacy, I wonder if this recording provides any interesting addition to the training of large language models, especially in its rawest version. Misplaced commas and articles herder. Our editor is always here to catch all the funky words and smooth out any rough edges I plant into my drafts. I always try not to be a pain in the arse and trigger as few comments as possible, but also not to exercise his patience with last minute requests and pointless discussions. Let's not forget about listing all the competitors Corporate rivalry and espionage are a thing, and in cases of more serious business, this part of stakeholder analysis would be much more detailed. Last but not least, the most important stakeholder is you, the watcher, who decided to continue watching this video up to this point, instead of dropping it right after the first sentence. You are in charge of saving this to your playlist, sharing it with the rest of the world. You have the power to like this video, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell. To get the best results, don't roll the users to the keep satisfied quadrant, but first of all, invite their reps to collaborate. Neglecting stakeholder engagement and alignment can sometimes trigger a dead end situation, break, the project or lower everyone's morale. 
Therefore, don't skip the discussion of every stakeholder. You'd be amazed at how many different chances, threats and perspectives open up when you dig deeper into people and institutions related to your project and how many times you will move the position of some post-it notes. Last but not least, a quick stakeholder workshop is an amazing opportunity for a team to warm up before breaking the ground of serious domain research. So grab our templates if you've never played with stakeholder mapping and consider it the first step towards better project. And if you have any experience in stakeholder mapping and management, let us know in the comments below what are your tips and tricks for better engagement and better projects. And bye now. Thanks for watching. Bye.